First of all, I want to welcome everybody here again today. So, so they kind of filled in here very nicely. I want to thank all the parents that were able to get here today. Um, again, this is a very special day for Cuesta College Athletics to honor our student athletes and coaches and, and a lot of things. So we got a great program ahead, of, uh, ahead here. So first of all, let me ask you this. What year do you think this Athlete of the Year luncheon began? First of all, Gil and Frank, you can't play the game right now. Can't play, or you, Pete. Guess what year? Oh, geez. Oh, <laughs> what year did this Athlete of the Year luncheon begin? <laughs> Figure it out, who's the math major? 1966. <laughs> this is the 54th annual luncheon naming of, uh, of, of athletes at Cuesta College. If you look in Pete Schuler's uh, book right there, the, the brochure, the first athlete was named in 1966. And I think that's a true testament to what we do here at Cuesta College. There's a lot of tradition here, excellence, and, and, and for something to run that long is amazing. I love to be a part of that, okay? Um, secondly, I just want to say this before we begin with introductions. As an athletic director or coaches that we have here and counselors, everybody here, you know, our job is to make sure our student athletes have a, a, a positive, rewarding experience while they're here for two years, three years, whatever it might be. But at the end of the day, it's my job to ensure that they leave here saying, wow, that was awesome. I, I learned a lot. I, I had a positive experience. And um, we do that academically, number one. I, I can attest to that. I, you know, we, we do put a, amount of, a lot of pride into uh, emphasizing academics first, and that's a positive experience, and athletically. We provide you a great uh, experience, I hope, at the end of the day. Um, I've had athletes over the years say, hey, Bob, Mr. Mariucci, I wish this was a four-year institution. I want to stay here two more years. And I said, well, let me talk to someone. <laughs> um, but seriously, but when someone says, I wish this was a four-year, that's actually a testament to what we've done over that two-year span. It goes by too quick, but we do a great job of, of mentoring young men and women. I want, to, I want to thank all the people involved in doing that. And I want to congratulate all the athletes here today for being honored today for that reason. And to cap, this is an experience to cap off your career here at Cuesta College and say congratulations, thank you for everything you've done for us. And we're going to have a, a great day today. So let's give everybody a round of applause to open this up. All right, several people I'd like to introduce here that are uh, with us here today. I'm going to just uh, introduce certain groups. Let's save our applause until I get done with a specific group. But from the Cuesta College Board of Trustees, President of the Board of Trustees, and I'd like to have you guys stand for just a moment and just, and then I'll, we'll give you a round of applause. President of the Board of Trustees, Pete Sizak, Vice President, Dr. Barbara George, Trustee Mary Strobridge, and Student Trustee Jordan Jansen. Thank you guys for being here. <laughs> we have a great turnout from administration. First, I'd like to introduce our Superintendent President, uh, Dr. Jill Stearns. And I'll go through the list. Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. Deborah Wolf. Executive, I mean, I'll go through this group right here. It's a big group. Executive Director of the Foundation of Institutional Advancement, Shannon Hill. Dean of Academic Affairs, Dr. Jason Curtis. Dean of Student Services, Catherine Reedstra. Dean of the North County and South County Center, Dr. Maria Escobedo. 2013 Alumnus of the Year, George Galvin. Uh, President Emeritus, Dr. Gil Stork. And as always, every year, batting cleanup, doc, uh, President Emeritus, Dr. Frank Martinez. Um, our Athletic Booster Club Executive Board is here. I can't tell you the, the, the love I have for that group. They've been so loyal to me as the director here and for many years. I just want to tell you how grateful I am for your support year in and year out and for always being there for us. Um, they raise a tremendous amount of money for our student athletes and coaches. Uh, they help us sponsor this luncheon here today. But most importantly, I, I cherish your friendship and, and your loyalty and your dedication to Cuesta College. Uh, they've been for, here for a long time, and I appreciate that. From our board, current president, Audrey Dodd, former uh, softball player, please stand. Uh, Vice President, Stan House, Abby Woodward, Joy Chambers, Mary Rash, Jim Sunderland, Nancy Webb, and Jason Curtis. Let's give them a great round of applause. Our, our sponsors here today, and I'll say the same thing about them. Obviously, I put our major sponsors up here on the wall. We do have a lot of sponsors that help us financially, but again, more importantly, it's the, it's the loyalty and the, 
the relationship that we built over time, the partnership that we've built over time. I appreciate that, that dedication to us, and it's tremendous. Um, from Rabble Bank, Chairman of Community Leadership Groups, Steve Harding, and Vice President Branch Manager, Lisa Adams. So I want to thank you. Here's that commitment, 50 years. Our men's basketball tournament has been 50 years. They've been sponsoring that tournament for 50 years, and now also sp sponsor our women's water polo tournament. I'd like to publicly thank uh, Philip 66. Unfortunately, they weren't be, be able to be here today, Jim Anderson and Kristen Kopp. But again, that tremendous loyalty to us. They've been sponsoring um, our women's basketball tournament for 32 years. So Philip 66, I'd like to thank. Um, from Camp San Luis Obispo, um, their commander could not be here today, but uh, with us today is Major Satelli. He's a director of public works, works and Sergeant Lindahl. Um, I want to say welcome here today. Our relationship there is great too because they, we share that gym over there with the use of the gym for wrestling and basketball and we, I've enjoyed our relationship with them. Um, from Columbia College, the director of Columbia College right here on our campus is Teresa Genova. So Teresa, thanks for being here today. And just a couple other thank yous. I, I do want to thank all of our physicians. Dr. Sean Devine is our, our, our team physician. He was unable to be here today, but all the physicians in this community, chiropractors, physical therapists, I mean, they certainly give Anthony and Brittany a, a, you know, a big hand in physicals and so forth, so I wanna thank all of our uh, medical staff that, that supports Cuesta College. And then lastly, I just, I'm gonna thank everybody in this room. I mean, everybody in here from the various departments, Cuesta Athle Athletics works with so many departments, from the foundation, the health center, counseling, financial aid, ASCC, everybody, Thank you for your support. We wouldn't be here without you, and we wouldn't have a, a, such a successful athletic program without your support. So I want to thank all of you for that. Um, and with that, I would like to now introduce our superintendent president, Dr. Jill Stearns. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Cuesta College. I want to congratulate our student athletes and um, on your success, and we know you are successful because you are here today. You have persevered. And I wanna thank our student athletes and our coaches for your role as ambassadors. As a community college, we are limited in terms of where we can um, talk about Cuesta and where we can be out in the community and sharing the great things happening here. But as you are out competing, you are representing Cuesta everywhere you go. And we appreciate the great light that you shine on this institution. So thank you for that. You are also ambassadors to all the young people in our community. You prove that you can be a full-time student and an athlete and successful in all that you do. So thank you for your outstanding representation of, of Cuesta College Cougars. And congratulations to our award winners today. We're glad you're here. Okay, with that, I'd like to inter introduce our sports information director and women's water polo coach, Pete Schuler. Let's give Pete a little round of applause here. All right, we're going to begin with the awards part of our awards banquet here. Uh, first thing we'd like to do is recognize before we get to the Athlete of the Year, we'll start with our Athletes of the Month. Each month we select uh, two athletes, one male, one female, to be recognized as our Athlete of the Month it's a program we've been running now for a long time, Gil. <laughs> um, so if we could have each of the athletes come up, you see the posters we have in the back of the room? We have posters individually for each student athlete also. So we'll bring them up and if we could have them line up along the front here, that'd be great. Uh, for September, our first two student athletes, or athletes of the Month, from wrestling, Anthony Stensky, and from soccer, Martha Mora. Okay. Martha couldn't make it today. In October, from water polo, we had Mason Smith for the men, and Kaylee Griffin from volleyball for the women. In November, for men's water polo again, Gabriel Browning, Gabriel's not here today, and Gabby Fabri, uh, she's taking a midterm at Cal Poly uh, for, for water polo also. So 
We move on to December from men's basketball, Joshua Wilson Murray. And from women's basketball, Maya Armenta. In January, men's basketball again, Alexander Fancini. And women's basketball, Madison Collins. For February, moved out to the Diamond. For baseball, Mason Grotto. And for softball, Katie Murphy. In March, we stuck with baseball, Aiden Nagel. Aiden's not here. And from track and field, Hannah Katches. And this past month for April, we have Jimmy Escobar, track and field, and Tristan Bennett from Swim and Dive. We'll have two more for May, but we've still got some teams competing right now. So that will do it for our Athletes of the Month for the 2018-19 school year. Our next award was established in 2002 as the Warren E. Hansen Scholar Athlete of the Year. Um, Warren Hanson, in recognition of Warren Hanson, he's a, our athletic director here for 36 years and his commitment to academic excellence. Student must maintain a 3.5 GPA and be nominated based on their citizenship and athletic performance. Our female Warren Hanson Scholar Athlete of the Year is Andrea Mendoza from Women's Soccer. Andrea is from Paso Robles. She's a two-time, a two-year member of the Quest of Women's soccer team. She earned all-conference as a second team as a freshman and all-conference honorable mention this year. She's a two-time all-conference academic team member. Uh, she has posted a 3.75 GPA over her time here at Quest of College, and she is a communications major study. Andrea will be transferring to Chico State. Our male scholar athlete of the year is Iker Cruz from men's basketball. <laughs> Iker's from Madrid, Spain. He's a two-year starter for men's basketball. He's one of the Cougars' captains this year. Um, he led Quest to back-to-back -back playoff berths. He is a all-conference first-team pick this year. He's honorable mention last year. And he has posted a 3.94 GPA at 49 units over the four semesters. His 1B came in the first semester, so I think that may have been a little transition with the language there. Is that what happened there? Uh, he's a social and behavioral science major, and he is still deciding where he's going to transfer and play. So both uh, Andrea and Eker will represent Quest College at the conference and state level as our uh, 3CAA Scholar Athlete nominees. Um, so good luck to both Eker and Andrea on that. Last year's winners, just a little update, both Mia Viss and Chandler Mankins were listed to the top 20 in the state. So another award for Cuesta College. Okay, our next award is our first award. This award goes back to the original uh, Athlete of the Year luncheon in 1966. You guys may remember that up front. Uh, in 1966, the Quest Athletic Booster Club Board of Directors established the George Silveria Student Athlete Career Award. The award honors and serves as a memorial for George Silveria. George served in World War II and is a graduate of the original San Luis Obispo Junior College in 1948. He was captain of the football team, an executive member of the student body, a dedicated student, and extremely involved in the community. He was well respected by his teammates, coaches, teachers, and peers, and he truly exemplified the meaning of student athlete. George passed away in 1961 to leuke leuke leukemia. Sorry. This award takes into consideration a student athletes' career as an athlete, their involvement in the college, community, sportsmanship, citizenship, coachability, and leadership on and off the field. In a sense, is this, type of, this award exemplifies the type of student athlete we try to mold here at Cuesta College. 
Quest athletes leave Cuesta and make an impact on the community at large, and this year's 54th George Silveria Career Award athlete is Hannah Ketches from volleyball, basketball, and track and field. <laughs> Hannah has enjoyed an outstanding and busy three years here competing for Cuesta College. She has been a star and team leader for two of her Cuesta's teams. Hannah began her career Began her career in volleyball. She's a two-year starter and a, as an outside hitter. She was fourth on the team as a freshman with 114 kills. This year, she was all-conference second team, and she was second on the team with 202 kills. She ranks 15th all-time at Cuesta with 316 career kills. After her first volleyball season, she went into basketball. Uh, she was the team's backup center there. Hannah redshirted volleyball the next season and went out for track. Um, she was the team's leader in shot put at 36 feet last year. Discus at 100 feet and a javelin at 120 feet. She earned all conference and javelin shot and finished fifth at the state championships last year in javelin. This year after volleyball, she won a conference title in javelin this year. She's been undefeated this year and is the number one ranked javelin thrower in the state. And she just claimed, <laughs> Hannah just claimed a regional title last weekend. And uh, so she's already advanced to state and uh, you know, she's going to return as a state, state favorite. So uh, our George Severia winner, our 54th, is Hannah Ketches. Thank you, Pete. Okay, next part of the program. I have a couple of spe uh, special presentations to uh, present here, but um, before I do that, I just want to uh, give a shout out to our coaching staff. I, I'm just telling you, I come to work every day, love what I do. I can't tell you the, the passion and love and work and energy that these coaches put into our student athletes year round. I mean, it's not, a, it's not during the season and uh, I'm very fortunate to work with them. Um, but I just want to tell them, thank you for all the hard work you do. And I also want the assistant coaches to stand because we have a lot of coaches on this campus that are, are volunteering their time and making that a commitment year round, and it's it's unbelievable for what we what we achieve I mean, with the coaching staff. So I like all the head coaches right now, please, and assistant coaches, just to, to stand up and just I just want to say thank you so much. Let's give them a round of applause. Um, every year, our 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 conference awards. Coaches of the Year, and I have two coaches that were awarded uh, uh, Coaches of the Year this year, so I'd like to have these two coaches just come up real quickly, uh, Coach Rusty Blair and Coach John Marsh. Please come on up. Let me just tell you about these two coaches here. They're, they're just a little bit about their career. Rusty's in his 27th season as the, as the head men's basketball coach, 27th. This past season, he hit a milestone winning his 500th career win to bring him to an overall, overall record of 506-358. He's actually in the top 10 of all community college coaches with over 500 wins. Uh, this past year, the Cougars went 22-8, and eight, won the conference title. That's the fifth conference title in seven years and advanced to the regional playoffs the seventh out of the eighth, the eighth past years. Uh, the Cougars were, were led by Josh Wilson-Murray and several other players. Uh, who was named Western State Player of the Year and also State Player uh, First Team. But uh, Rusty Blair, I just want to say congratulations on, the, on a milestone year. Congratulations. Good job. Uh, coach Marsh. John Marsh uh, was selected Women's Swim Coach of the Year. Uh, John has been uh, the head, and men's women, head men's and women's swimming coach for the past 16 years, uh, along with a uh, men's water polo coach. Uh, this past year, the women's team placed second in the conference, and we qualified two men and two women to the state meet this past weekend, along with all five relays on each of all the men and women's teams. Um, and again, this past weekend at the state meet, all of his uh, four swimmers placed in the top 15, but he's been a, a tremendous uh, uh, coach for the aquatics program, and I just want to congratulate you on a well-deserved award. So congratulations, John. And these two coaches right here, they're excited about getting in that new pool this fall. I tell you that. We're excited about getting to that new pool. 
So I want to thank Bob Miller for giving me little gifts for our, our special presentations. This is the hat he, he gave me to, to give. Wait, that's not it. <laughs> what size is that, Bob? What is that? <laughs> it's anyway, I just want to thank Bob Miller for giving me that these nice baseball caps to give to the award bearer. <laughs> All right, give him a nice round of applause. Thank you very much. Okay, this is, this is, I have another little uh, presentation I'd like to give. I'd just like to take a time to thank and recognize uh, Dr. Deborah Wolf um, on her time here. Uh, Dr. Wolf, for those of you who know, she's our Vice President of, of Academic Affairs. Uh, she's been here 11 and a half years or so, but she's going to be leaving us at the end of June. And I thought this would be a great time to just thank Deb for your, again, love and commitment to Cuesta College. You've done so much for this college. Um, at, for at one point, she was the Dean of Kinesiology and Athletics, and the support you gave to athletics was tremendous. And at this time, we just want to thank you for that and wish you the very best of luck in, in your f uh, future endeavors. So please come up and get another hat right here. <laughs> Try that on. <laughs> They're big, Bob. They're big. Look at that. What is that? <laughs> okay. Um, in, 2009, in 2009, we began another award. It was the Alberta Deutsch Fan of the Year Award. A little bit of history on that award. Dan and Alberta Deutsch were tremendous fans and supporters of Cuesta College. Great friends of the, of the program. Alberta passed away that year from cancer. And, and she was one that was at every basketball game, every softball game. She was a former athlete herself, just a tremendous family and, and commitment to us. Dan now lives in Southern California, but he's still one of our biggest supporters and fans. But we established the Alberta Deutsch Fan of the Year Award, and I'd like to present that right now. Every year we do get uh, nominations on people that come to the games, and they love Quest Athletics, and they support our student athletes. Some previous winners are Tommy Jin, Chris Ballou, Monica Satterwhite, Frank Martinez. Um, we've had some tremendous people over the years uh, receive this award. And again, this, this year is no different. Um, I'm just gonna read about this recipient real quickly. Um, this person has been a part of the Cuesta community, community for quite some time. Um, he was a former Cuesta College basketball player under Don Hansen. Uh, he was, you put it up there already? Oh, that's not a surprise. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah, Rob, Rob was an assistant coach under Coach Blair for a couple of years. Rob, hold on, hold on. Uh, his son and daughter graduated from Morro Bay. Um, his son played basketball here for us also. Um, he's a tremendous supporter of the men's basketball and women's volleyball program for many years. And you'll see Rob at every men's and women's home game, quietly up in the stands, rooting us on. And that's not just this year, it's been for many years. Um, and what I really like about this recipient, it really brings back the spirit of this award as far as somebody being in the stands, loving what our student athletes, and making that commitment to Cuesta College. So this year's Fan of the Year Award goes to Rob Thomas. It's a good job. Hold on. Awesome. Yeah, but I think I, I think I have the wrong hat. You might be able to go in there. <laughs> Thanks a lot, buddy. Okay, Appreciate Rob. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Okay, at this point, we're going to get to our Athlete of the Year nominees. Uh, each team nominates their MVP for the season, and the coaches will come up here and explain their nominees, and at the year, end of the uh, presentation, we will announce our overall Athlete of the Year. So this is the MVP of the MVPs. Our first sport is my nominee from Women's Water Polo Faith Archibald. Um, first time I saw Faith play, uh, I knew she could be an All-American. I was refereeing it out at Tascadero High School, and uh, now here she is. She is an All-American. Because, uh, but it took a while for us to get there, because when I asked her, you know, hey, what are your plans for next year? She told me she was going to be a, go to her junior year of high school. So I had to wait a couple years. Uh, <laughs> she was so far ahead of everybody just, just playing that I just thought she had to be a senior, but she wasn't. But, uh, you know, you got to have faith. So I was very happy when faith finally called and uh, 
told me she was coming to play for Quest College. And she came out, out there and she was everything we expected in the preseason, fast, smooth, just a great player. But then Faith had to take about three weeks off right at the beginning of the season. She had a medical issue she had to take care of. And uh, so all that training, all that stuff, and we didn't get Faith back until the last few weeks of the season. And she was a big part of our season that helped us jump into the playoffs. But Faith spent a lot, the whole year pretty much sitting on the bench and out there cheering, leading from the bench. And so when she had this opportunity this year, everything all came, to get, came together. Team leader on the, on, in the, on the pool deck, in the water, and she was everything we expected. 87 goals is the seventh leading scorer in the state. Uh, but not only that, because she was a consummate team player. I mean, the, when the old people remember this, but do you remember the old EF Hutton commercials? When Faith talked, Faith is kind of quiet, but she's a, her leadership is unquestioned from everybody on the team. And when Faith talked, people listened. And that was Faith. And it came all the way through. And that was a, on a season this year where we spent 10 weeks on the road every weekend. Having a leader like Faith made all the difference. And having a leader in the pool made all the difference. And Faith made sure, even though she was a leading scorer, she also made sure everybody on the team was, was uh, playing at their level. She led the team in assists, and she's just the type of player when you see, you know when you see that athlete where they make everything look easy, the hard plays look easy, they move smooth, even at full speed, that's Faith. And she was one of the best players this year. First team all-conference, first team all-SoCal and all-American. So from Quest of Water Polo, uh, Faith Archibald is our nominee. Our next presenter from men's basketball, Ron Barba, and his nominee, Maya Armenta. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm, I I'm feel privileged to be here today and uh, have all these distinguished guests in front of us and the parents and athletes. It's, it's always wonderful to come up and talk about uh, players and uh, who are in your program and watch the other recipients as well. You see how successful Cuesta College really is and the family that we, we have. I would like to introduce my assistant basketball coach, Lance Carney. Please stand up. <clears throat> and then I would like to introduce Maya's dad, Cheeto Armenta. Please stand up. And also we have Maddie Collins and Greg Murphy that were a part of our team this year. Maddie was a player for us this year. Thank you, Maddie, and thank you, Greg. All right. It, uh, it's always a privilege to talk, and don't give me a microphone because I love to talk. And, and talking about basketball is certainly a, a, a passion of mine. I love it. I love working with the athletes. I, I love to see where they go. I see the metamorphosis when they come out of high school and go to wherever they're going to go. But in this case, I've been able to see this player since she was in fourth grade. So I, I've seen quite a metamorphosis. Uh, Kevin Durant, Golden State Warriors uh, superstar, who's like seven feet tall and, and is a point guard at, at times and is once said in the NBA that uh, basketball is just a platform for me to inspire people. Maya Armenta is not seven feet tall. She's five foot one. Is that correct or am I be exaggerating? No. And in many ways, it's just like Kevin Durant. She is talented. She's etched her name in our record books here. And she has the heart of a giant and the heart of a seven footer, believe me. Um, she isn't seven feet. She isn't even close to it. But she has the desire, competitiveness, of a giant, and she has the will to win, just like Kevin Durant. Uh, I first met Maya when, when I was a head high school basketball coach in Santa Maria when she was at one of my clinics. She was probably in the third or fourth grade, and I thought this girl's got so much spunk and is electrifying, fun to watch. She came out of Rigetti High School and led them to a league championship, and, and they're on an incredible playoff run right now from, from her start. And she's quick, she's made her teams good because she has an IQ on and off the floor. She excels in the classroom and out of the classroom. And she has athletic qualities 
that go along with it. But the biggest thing is she has heart. And she doesn't use size as an excuse. She uses it as determination. And, and that's why I'm proud to have been her coach. Uh, if you watched my uh, play, you witnessed a player who was not only electrifying, but also went against teams much bigger than her. And she excelled. And when she, when she played, she put everything on the floor. And that's what you ask as a coach, put it on the floor. And usually when she left the floor, she had the best results of the whole stat line for a girl five foot one. We, we, uh, we know that uh, Maya's a special player, and I know she's had a lot of family support, and it's evident. And um, I think the two years she's had here at Cuesta College has helped develop her for the next uh, phase in her life. Uh, she, she drove from Guadalupe every day to practice and to school. That shows you some commitment right there. She missed maybe one practice in her entire two years here, okay? And that was because she had a concussion, I believe. Uh, this past season, she helped us uh, to a 16-13 record overall, six and four, third place record in league. We missed the playoffs by one game. Uh, we ended up ranked 20th, they took 19. So uh, was no mistake on our end. I think we, we gave it all we had. She was named to the first team Western State Conference this year, was honorable mention her freshman year, named co-MVP along with Maddie Collins at our sports banquet a few weeks ago. Um, so with that, I, I wanna say she's had great achievements. And I think if you look into the book, I don't need to read this, there's a ton of things she's etched in, in her career here. Uh, the biggest thing that I, I can say where she's electrifying is she, she was leading the state at one point in steals. I can't remember where she ended up. I think it was third or fourth. She was first in our conference in steals. But with all those stats that she has, you can tell what an amazing player this individual is at five foot one. Finally, I know her size uh, never stopped her from playing. Why? Because she has a passion for the game. She runs up and down the floor. She's all over the place. She dives into the stand. She plays both sides of the, the, uh, the ball well. Why? Because she loves the game. Maya's proven many people and coaches wrong over her career. I'm honored to have been her coach and more honored to know her and her supportive family who have always been there for her. Maya, we anxiously will await your decision as to where you play next year. I know it's right around the corner and she's been on several trips right now, so we're waiting to hear what she is going to decide here in the next week. I just wanna say, Maya, I'm proud of you, who you are, and you are an inspiration. Spread those wings and continue to fly. Once a cougar, always a cougar. Maya. Okay, next will be uh, Coach John Marsh for Women's Swing. We're going to do them all, he said. Okay. okay. Um, sorry my athletes can't be here, but they actually have to be students. We've missed school six days out of the last ten, so they need to be in class. We have one making up a physics lab. We have one taking a test in an office hour. And then we have one actually taking a test in a normal class, so they're unable to attend. Um, so, as you can see, they've had an outstanding year, but I thought I would change it up a little bit because we're already behind schedule with the people that have talked the first two. So I'm going to go real quick. I wanted to give some thank yous this year because there's some people that behind the scenes made some huge things. First would be Dr. Stearns. The letter that you sent my kids from two years ago, I got more raves from parents, so thank you very much for that. As Pete knows, we were off campus all year. And I would like to thank Dr. Wolf and Dr. Dean Curtis for all the help and support they did. You don't realize how much or how painful it was for the last 13 months. So thank you for everything you guys did. For, our, for us, our equipment guys actually traveled to Bakersfield for a water polo tournament. Our trainers traveled to Bakersfield for a water polo tournament. One of them traveled to Bakersfield for a swim meet that we hosted, and we had some of them attending Santa Barbara when our women's team hosted. So for our equipment guys and our, 
trainers, thanks for everything you guys did. I know you did above and beyond. Thank you. And then everybody else that we have from our counseling office, administrations and records, from Nancy Webb who patiently waited for paperwork because Pete and I were gone most of the year. Thank you very much. And then for everybody else that I forgot to mention, but we're going to try to get us back on schedule. Thanks for coming and thanks for all your support. So just real recap, Tristan Bennett was uh, for uh, Women's Swing and then uh, Gabriel Browning for Men's Water Polo. And our next nominee from Men's Track and Field is Jimmy Escobar. And his coach, Brian Loker. Um, so as a track and field coach, I'm not sure how much, how much a lot of you know about track and field, but it can be a very complicated sport. There's a lot of things happening in a lot of different areas. Uh, and Jimmy's expertise is in the pole vault. Um, we've been really fortunate at Cuesta College to have um, some great pole vaulting coaches here. Um, but I can't perf um, tell you that I know too much about the pole vault. Um, which is always interesting to go and watch the pole vault because what they're doing with the pole and how high they're getting in the air and um, the, the mental game that you play with pole vault is extremely challenging. Um, so Jimmy came here to us, uh, actually recruited through his cousin, uh, Mike, who attended Cuesta last year. And uh, Jimmy played second fiddle to Mike a lot of last year as he was starting to come through our pole vault system. Um, and, uh, you know, it was a challenging year for Mike. He ended up making the, or, uh, for Jimmy, he ended up making the state championships but I don't think Jimmy felt like he did as well as he would have liked to do that season. Um, and he also fought a lot of injuries um, on his path to trying to become a better pole vaulter. Um, and this year, Jimmy's blossomed as a person. It's always interesting to see that as a coach, which of your athletes, watching them um, be raised to your program and how they change as people and as athletes. Uh, from a, a work ethic perspective, Jimmy's always had what he's needed to have. He works extremely diligently hard. Um, he's always in the study hall. I think he's you know, he's going to study hall probably 15 hours a week um, on, on, you know, annual. Uh, he's getting A's in all of his classes. He's a fantastic student. Um, and he does the same things outside of the classroom as well on the track. So un unfortunately for Jimmy, he spent a lot of the time being injured again this year. Um, but his coaches were able to, to get him the fitness he needed. He ended up riding the bike a lot. Um, he had a pretty good start to the season in terms of his pole vaulting, uh, but we hit a, a stretch in the middle of the season where Jimmy actually fought another injury. He thought he had a stress fracture. We actually sat out a month. Um, and there was a, during that time, Jimmy found out a lot about himself and a lot about his love for pole vault. Um, and it wasn't always about um, needing to, you know, get scholarships or anything like that. He had earlier in the year committed to the University of Minnesota. Um, and by the end of his month-long layoff of not pole vaulting, uh, he wasn't sure whether he wanted to come back and do it again. Um, and we were really happy to find out that Jimmy didn't have a stretch fracture, uh, that he had a renewed love for pole vaulting, um, and he wanted to just do it for himself because he loves it so much. Um, and the result of that was pretty awesome. Uh, Jimmy, in the last just three weeks, has gone from um, a young man um, on a short run, which many of you may not know, understand what that means, but the longer run you can get, uh, the more speed you get into the pole vault pit, um, which means you can jump higher. So Jimmy's gotten on his long run. He's gotten on bigger poles than he's ever jumped on before. Uh, he's now the state leader in the pole vault. Um, he doesn't want, he doesn't even know if he wants to continue at the next level. He just wants to enjoy every day for the day that it is and his ability to pole vault because he's gone through so many injuries. Um, and it's pretty cool. I really respect Jimmy for his, his perspective in the sport. Um, he doesn't feel like he's pressured to go to a school just because other coaches because he's so darn good at it. Um, he just wants to do it because he feels like it. And next year he feels like coming back to Cuesta because he wants to continue to work on his academics. Um, so from a, a coaching standpoint, we couldn't ask for more uh, from an athlete. Um, couldn't ask for more from a person. He's, he's done everything we've asked him to do. Um, has been good at it the whole time. And uh, his, his place at the top of the state right now is, is because he's willing to work hard and, and focus on what he loves to do best, and that's pole vault. Our battery's running low. Um, our next nominee, 
From women's volleyball is Kaylee Griffin and her coach, Whitney Meyer. Kaylee, affectionately known by our team as Kale. One of our assistant coaches thought two syllables was too much, so Kale. Um, she made me change one of my coaching strategies this year. For the first time ever, if, if we won the coin flip, uh, I asked our captains to call for receive. And so that was so we could get the ball in Kaylee's hands faster. I wanted her to be the first one to attack the ball. And usually uh, teams had scouted us, knew that we were going to set Kaylee that first ball, which meant she had a triple block. And that never phased her. She used her athleticism and her ability to, to power through and find holes in their, their, uh, the other team to get us a kill. So we, we pretty much had a first side out every single time we passed that ball. And that was in thanks to, to Kaylee and our offense. She was dominant both offensively and defensively for us this year. Uh, her 107 total blocks set the record at Cuesta. And she was second in the state for blocks per set. Uh, so her numbers, um, we didn't even go to a postseason, and she still is up there in the state um, with, with the record books. She earned State Player of the Week honors, as well as first team all-conference, and was unanimously our team MVP. Uh, there was one match, though, where we played Ventura at home, and the first four points that Kay they tried to hit, Kaylee's stuff blocked. And it was just amazing. They tried to set a one, Kaylee's stuff blocked. They tried to set a three, Kaylee's stuff blocked. I, they finally called the timeout because they're like, what do we do? How do we get the ball back over the net? And um, it was just great to watch her. She did that for us throughout the season. Um, she, we ended up losing that game, though, against Ventura. And then that only fired us up to go back and take them on at their place. And Kaylee had her season high of 18 kills in that victory against Ventura. She hit a 444. It was a, a great hard-fought match, and her determination was a driving force for us that, that day. Her athletic abilities will be marked in the record books, but I will always remember how much Kaylee loved the game of volleyball. Uh, the entire last week, we didn't know if we were, we were on the cusp of playoffs, and so every day they came in, they're working out. She cried pretty much every day at practice. Um, she was just brought to tears in a huddle. We would be going for a water break and she'd cry. And it's just because she loved the game and she didn't want to see it end. And um, that passion drove her. Um, she was a red shirt last year. She worked hard through that red shirt year and just that passion for volleyball and uh, those tears. But I'll miss those tears. Uh, she was a leader on our team and just a pillar of strength through tough battles. She had this look and I knew that Kaylee meant business, a, a seriousness about her and our setters knew give her the ball. But at the same time, Kaylee can be uh, goofy and silly and break a teammate out of her shell. Um, Hannah, her teammate here, is smiling because she knows what I'm talking about. Um, Kaylee has some cool dance moves, um, some really goofy dance moves. And um, Baby Shark, getting my nose that song, she could be found singing that at the net. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so um, she kept it light and kept it fun for us all season, and uh, we will miss that passion and that love. And when I polled the team uh, one time in the season, I said, who should get the set for game point? Unanimously, it was Kale. And um, for that reason and many others, Kaylee is our nominee for Athlete of the Year. Our next nominee from baseball is Mason Grotto with his coach, Bob Miller. Unlike your sport, Brian, everybody knows about baseball, so i got to watch myself here today. Uh, at least I think they knew, right? You should have bunted, coach. You should have stole right there. What's that? <laughs> yes. Anyway, honored to introduce Mason Grotto, baseball's nomination for the Male Athlete of the Year. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Mason's mom and dad are with us here today, uh, Dave and Deborah Grotto. Thanks for being here today. Mason is our, uh, is our team MVP, and so MVP, most valuable player. And Mason's year, the numbers that he put on the board wouldn't necessarily reflect maybe an MVP year uh, in terms of batting average and home runs and whatnot, but most valuable player, the, most, the player that gave us the contribution that we could not do without was Mason. In his time here at Cuesta, he did produce numbers. 
He has a uh, tremendous knack for, uh, for hitting, for hitting with two strikes, knowing the strike zone, taking a walk, the ability to drive the ball over the fence, which really wasn't his forte. It was more of like hitting doubles and clutch hitting and that type of thing. So his contribution through the two years was just, it was the most valuable, most valuable player. And uh, we used him in the leadoff spot because he got on base. We used him in the two hole sometimes because he was a great situational hitter. He was a guy that wasn't necessarily up there just to produce numbers. He was up there to help the team win. He could hit behind the runner. He could throttle down his swing when the infield was back instead of taking a base hit, hit a ball to the shortstop and take the RBI to help the team win. Most valuable player. His defense and the contribution he made with the glove was fantastic. Great range at third base. It was like having two shortstops on the left side of the diamond. His ability to come in and field bunts and take away what could have been hits for the other team, it was great. It was great the contribution he made with the glove and the ability to go into the hole and to go down the line. Uh, most valuable player. Most valuable player. But again, the winning contribution, that's what really stood out. A guy that was in there for the team, not necessarily chasing the numbers. And he wouldn't tell you, but to tell his story, he did suffer a hand injury about halfway through the season where he had a little broken bone in his hand, which is a very common baseball injury called a broken hamate bone. And so not one complaint. Uh, he taped it up. He uh, battled in the playoffs. He hit uh, cleanup for us, which is usually a power and a major run-producing position. But uh, again, most valuable player. On and off the field, same off the field as he was on the field. He's got an impressive GPA of almost a 3.4. And the influence he had on his teammates will be very difficult to replace. He came to the baseball field, he came to the weight room, and he gave his all and it rubbed off on his teammates, and we were the team we were for the contribution that he gave us as our most valuable player. Congratulations, Mason. Our next nominee from cross country is Garen Knox. This is Coach Brian Loker. Uh, for those of you in the audience listening, you'll hear a common theme amongst the coaches today, and, and that is um, a lot of our MVPs, our, our athletes who are, are on the Athlete of the Year recipients aren't always our best athletes, but the people that contributed the most to our teams and made the teams run. Um, and that is uh, part of Garen's story as well. Um, his brother actually ran for me cross country and track and field a couple years ago, and uh, so I knew Garen was going to be running for me for quite a while. Um, when I was recruiting him out of high school, um, I watched his stride at the county championships, and although he wasn't running blazing times, I, I felt like there was a lot of tools that Garen had that we could use at the next level, and I could help him grow as an individual. Um, and he grew um, a lot more than just in his running. He grew in life a lot, um, and ended up becoming a team captain for us and making our team run this year. Um, so it was really fantastic to have Garen on board, um, and he was the athlete, a lot of like many of the athletes that we have in here today, um, he never missed his long run. Uh, Garen would often go um, on vacations with his uh, parents, and I would get on him about it, and he would say, don't worry, coach, I'm not going to miss my runs. Um, and he never did. So he would text me the runs he did, give me the workouts he did. He would give me videos of the runs he was doing while he was on vacation, um, and the guy just never missed a run. Um, like I said, he was willing to st step up his game. Um, Garen ended up running about 70 miles a week for us this year. Uh, that meant running on... Saturdays or Sundays, depending on what we went, he was running up to 16 miles at a time. Um, I know that sounds atrocious to many people, <laughs> um, but uh, Garen actually enjoyed it, and, and his drive to get better was, was really um, meant something to the team. Everybody, he brought the rest of the team along with that drive to, get, to be more successful. Um, I think one of the things that really stands out about Garen is, is his, um, he's really grown into himself as, with his confidence level this year. Um, oftentimes last year he had a bad race and get really down on himself um, and this year he would have those bad races but he would come back stronger the next week and just be determined to be able to succeed where he didn't the previous time. Um, one of the things I really enjoyed, this isn't something you always really enjoy about your athletes, but uh, 
Garen gave me a little bit of feedback, a little bit of lip this, earlier this semester, because uh, I get on these guys about going to study hall all the time, and um, Garen was like, you know what, coach? I'm getting my homework done. Everything's taken care of. Just leave me alone. I don't need to be in study hall anymore. Uh, I, I appreciate that, because you know some kids give you that lip, and they're not actually going to study hall. Garen is getting it done. He doesn't need the help, right? He, he's, he's grown through the process enough that he doesn't need to be in study hall. Uh, he's getting his work done. Uh, his grades are great. Um, he's chosen to go to San Jose State next, next year. Um, still hoping to run, and that is part of Garen's process. Is, uh, he grew from a 10-minute two-miler into a young man um, at the community college um, level that, that's been a, a very exceptional athlete and grown into um, a, a young man who's been on the top 10 list for one of our events in the 3K. Um, he's not yet accepted to run for San Jose State's team, but this, his season is effectively done. He didn't qualify the next level, um, but we've earmarked some meets, and Garen wants to continue to run, and the San Jose State coach has given him a time he has to run. Garen's like, you know what, coach, I want to keep training. I want to run on that team next year. Our next nominee from women's soccer is Martha Mora and her coach, Bob Wilson. Fortunately, Martha uh, had a death in the family, and she's out of the country right now with her family, um, helping, her, helping them all get through that. And she's really sad not to be here. She texted me just before this lunch, and to, again, I apologize for that. Um, at Cuesta in soccer, you need 20, 20, 25 really quality athletes to compete in our league. And we, we struggle getting that many athletes at, at, at this school for, for uh, the level that we need. And this last season, we had this season coming in where I had three really returning players that I thought had great leadership. Andrea Mendoza, who um, got our scholar athlete, and Sydney Esser, who was just behind her in scholar athlete. And, Mackenzie Wilson, we've had just great leaderships come in, and we had our first practice with, with our team, and little Martha from Cambria was there, and, you know, Cambria is not known to be soccer-producing, you know, factory up there, and, and me and Coach Marcus Desplantes spent the whole practice like this. <laughs> wow, and we just knew right then we, we got something. We got something special. Um, Martha broke the school record that has been held for 22 years in goals scored, or actually points scored for the season with 51 points. That record's 22 years old. She broke the school, school record for goals scored that's been held for 16 years. She broke really six records. She scored in the first four games, she scored two goals in each game. In the first seven games, she scored a goal. She would have scored in the eighth game, but she had the flu. She didn't get to play, and we scored five goals in that game. I'd have kept her in until she got a goal, believe me. Um, the other thing with Martha, she was uh, top three in the conference for goals scored. But again, like almost all our coaches are talking about their athletes, when we're putting the balls away, Martha's putting them away. Putting the pennies away, Martha's putting them away. She would irritate me because I'd take her out of the game to rest her, and we'd have a couple balls get kicked, and we'd have to send a player to go get them, put them behind the goal, and she'd go do it. And it'd be like, sit down, you know, I want somebody else could do this for us. Um, just a fantastic young lady, um, a wonderful person, and very family oriented. And she's apologized for not being here, but a, a wonderful player, probably the best soccer player Quest has ever had. Thank you very much. Okay, our next nominee from women's softball, Katie Murphy, and her coach, Janelle Guadagno. <clears throat> well, first, congratulations to all the athletes here, all the award winners, and congratulations to all the families and all the support staff here today. Thank you. Big thank you. And thank you for not putting me after Coach Dansby. <laughs> I grew a couple inches, so I'm not last now. Thanks. <laughs> well, Katie Murphy, she was a hard athlete to even get on campus. Um, one of the previous coaches, um, Henry, which most of you know, said, you have to go watch this kid up at Templeton. So I go there. She big leagues me. I try to get in contact with her. 
hey, I'm new. We're going to turn it around here at Cuesta. Blew me off. <laughs> Parents were on board. They wanted her to come here. We finally convinced one of her best friends to come on a visit. Then she later convinced Katie to come as well. It was ecstatic to get her. Not only is she a phenomenal athlete, she's a great teammate and a great person to be around. She shined on the field. You can see she's going to enter the record books in multiple categories, and she was three points away from earning our conference MVP. And that was voted on by the coaches as well. It was pretty funny to see when Katie was up to bat, the coach's box was about... 40 feet away, and I was standing in left field. Coaches would say, well, why are you standing so far back? If you saw the, how hard she hit those balls, you would be standing behind the fence. <laughs> they would look over and say, she's going to bunt. And I'm like, please pull your third baseman back. She's not going to bunt. We do not need our trainers to come out here. The thing that I will miss most about Katie is her fire, her drive, and her competitive spirit. She made everybody around her better. She made her teammates better. She was constantly willing to help them to improve their fielding, to improve their hitting, give them little tips, tricks, and nuances to make our team better. And that's why she is our unanimous MVP and softball's nominee for Athlete of the Year. Having some technical difficulties. But our uh, next nominee from Women's Cross Country is Kirsten Purcell, your coach, Brian Loker. Um, just want to have a little round of applause. I think Bob and Pete will be very happy with us for keeping this uh, short and pretty. So, round of applause for the coaches. Good job today. Um, you can get closer, I'm not going to bite you. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kirsten Purcell, I was reminded. This is super embarrassing. So I've been calling her Kirsten for the past two years. And uh, I've loved working with her, so it's not like I don't know her very well. And then just the other day, she's like, Coach, it's Kirsten. <laughs> so, um, so I'm living with that. I have this, like, heavy shoulders of guilt right now. Um, but... Uh, as you've kind of determined, I, I'm not uh, much of a stats guy, so I'm going to start with some stats, and I'll tell um, Kirsten's story. Um, she is number four all-time at Quest in the 800. Uh, she was an All-American last year in the 800. She finished fourth at the state championships. She's also ranked in the top 10 for the 200 and the 400 meters at Cuesta College. Um, she was all-conference, all-region, all-state, so she's been a very accomplished young lady for us. Um, she and I didn't always start on the right foot. I tried to convince her to do cross country her first year here, and um, she kind of big leagued me. Yeah, she's like, uh, yeah, I'll sign up for that class. And then I kept checking to see if she was registered, and she never registered for it. So I'd call, keep calling back and say, hey, uh, I heard you're going to do cross country. She's like, yeah, I just haven't had time to sign up yet. I'm still going to do it. And lo and behold, she didn't do it. Um, but she came out and ran track, um, and she had a, a, a troublesome first year. It was, there were a lot of, of growing, uh, growing pains for her and I as a coach. Um, oftentimes, we would run intervals that I've had athletes do before that weren't that hard, and she would get through a couple of them and be like, I'm exhausted. I don't know if I can do another one. I was like, I'm pretty sure you can. Um, but we got to know each other a lot better, um, and she started to trust in what we were doing, and she started to trust me as a person, as a coach, um, and she started to run a lot faster, and her second year was a world of difference. She did cross country for me. I was able to convince her of doing that, um, and then she came out on the track, and uh, she had a fantastic track season, and it was like night and day. I mean, the, the individual that you would have seen your first year is like, I didn't recognize Kristen her second year running for me, um, and that went from, you know, lowering her the general rule of like running distance races is you get about two seconds better per year per event. Um, depending on the lap. So if you were to run 25 laps, you could, you know, it's a 10K, um, you could imagine that you would get, uh, you know, about 30 seconds better from one year to the next. Uh, so in the 800, that's about two seconds, which would have put her at a 219, but instead she ran a 215. Um, so it was the, the growth was um, really remarkable. Um, 
But the reason she's the MVP for our team this year is because of who she is as a person. Um, and she really united our, our women's team. And um, she was able to be the, the mother to a lot of our, our young, young little uh, tracklings that we have on the team and, um, and help foster them in and learn more about our program and, and keep things the way they're supposed to be. She's always worked hard. Uh, she's always been a very responsible person. Um, she's grown into a hard worker um, and a diligent athlete. Um, and, but the thing that about Kirsten is she's just always been a good person. Um, and so I can't say more about um, my time spending with her. And she is a third year, will be going to Chico State next year to run, and uh, she's going to be sorely missing our team. I don't know where our power went, but our next uh, nominee is from wrestling, Anthony Stensky and his coach, Joe Dansby. Let me see. Oh, yeah, this works. Okay. Um, since we have a little bit extra time, <laughs> uh, I want to I apologize to um, Coach Rusty Blair and John Marsh and Mr. Rob Thomas because um, Bob asked me to give you some singlets, but some wrestling singlets, but I wouldn't let him have them because we don't have that many. So I apologize. You would have got one of those, and I, ne next year maybe you'll get one. Um, a couple, couple weeks ago, um, I ran into to Bob Mariucci, and he told me, um, hey, uh, what trendy song are you going to sing this year? And I was like, kind of puzzled. I was like, um, I'm that predictable. I'm not, I'm not going to sing a trendy song then, Bob. How about that? So those of you that are expecting me to sing something trendy, upbeat, something like that, not going to happen. And if you don't like it, blame Bob Mariucci. It's his fault. Um, Anthony Stinsky is our nominee for Athlete of the Year for, for wrestling, for the sport of wrestling. Uh, he's our regional champion. We don't have very many regional champions. Um, he was our all, first team all-conference rep representative. He led the team in victories this year with 23. Um, what's most impressive, he's he has the winning percentage, the highest winning percentage, on 10th overall in Quest of Wrestling history. So those are some huge things. Um, I met with Anthony at the, about this time last year. And he wrestled for us a couple years ago. And um, when Anthony came to us, he was a boy. Uh, not quite a young man, I would say. And he, he treated everything like here, like it was Disneyland. Everything, practice. Oh, yeah, this is a nice amusement park. Always laughing. And I was like trying to make things tough, and he's just laughing. <sighs> I wish I could get this guy serious. Um, he kind of treated school that way, too, a little bit. We needed some work on school. Um, when we went on road trips, it was like everything. This is, oh, this is fun, Disneyland, yay. Like, ah. Oh. And then he had this wrestling style where it, it was bothersome as a coach because he would get a pin, which is great for wrestling. He would get a pin for us, or he would get pinned, which is horrible. So I was like, oh, yeah, Anthony's winning. Yeah. Oh, he just got pinned. <laughs> oh, he got a pin. Yay. So it was like just a roller coaster ride of a year, his first year. Um, so it's like, I wish we could change this. I, we wish we could make this guy know that he, if he wrestles for seven minutes, he's going to be good. Anthony didn't want to wrestle for seven minutes. He wanted to wrestle for like four. You know, maybe one, right? Yeah, maybe one. So it was pin or get pin when he was a, when he was a freshman. Basically what I'm saying, he was immature. <laughs> okay. So, uh, <laughs> true. Okay. So we, we talked uh, last spring, and I said, listen, Anthony, I would love for you to wrestle for us again. Uh, we, we need a leader. We need, we need somebody that's going to be mature, somebody that, that's going to be a hard worker, somebody that these kids can follow. You think you can do that for me? And he went like this. I didn't really believe him. but okay. um, so anyway, what, his wrestling was, is very powerful. 
It's, it's electrifying, what you, what you might say is electrifying. Um, and again, I asked him, hey, we need you to, to be a young man, be a role model for these kids coming in. So after that conversation, I, I really just, I got, I got chills, you know, I got, I got chills. It was, it was kind of electrifying. I just got these chills with the conversation we had. And I go, well, maybe this is, the, maybe he will be the leader that, that I need. So um, it ended up being, the year the year's done now, and it's it ended up being way more than I expected. He did much more than I expected. He, he has grown so much, and he really exemplifies what Cuesta can do, what athletics can do, and what an intrinsic motivation can do for a person. He's come a long way. And I'm not going to sing you a song, I'm not going to sing you a trendy song, but I'm going to sing you a little bit of a classic <laughs> song. Reminded me of that conversation that we had um, last spring. I might need some help from you guys, if you know it. I got chills. They're multiplying. <laughs> oh, you know it. <laughs> when you said you would join the wrestling team, because the power you're supplying, it's electrifying. But you better shape up, because I need a man, not a boy that acts like a fool. You better shape up. You better understand. I'm going to be counting on you. You're the one that I want. The one that I want. You're the one that I want, the one I need for my wrestling team. If we can make a few corrections, get your style under control, meditate in that direction, improve yourself. But you better shape up, because I need a man. Not a boy that acts like a fool. You better shape up. You better understand. I'm going to be counting on you. You're the one that I want. You're the one that I want. Come on. And you're the one that I want. The one I need for my wrestling team. Wrestling, wrestling's nomination for Athlete of the Year, Anthony Stinsky. Our nomination for men's basketball, Joshua Wilson Murray, is coach Rusty Blair. Hey, Joe, they're doing auditions next week for American Idol. Don't show up. Do not show up. Where are you? <laughs> Why do I always get stuck behind him? Every year. At least we've adjusted the microphones, right? Okay. Just kidding. Well, first of all, I want to give a couple shout-outs to a couple of my players sitting over there. Uh, Iker, Scholar Athlete of the Year, and uh, Alex, who was uh, a Scholar Athlete for the month. Both those guys have, have achieved not only, I'm going to go real quick on this. Iker, you just received a full-ride scholarship last night, correct? Yes, you did. <clears throat> Alex received an invitation to the top 100 camp in America for the top 100 freshmen in the entire United States. <clears throat> but we're here to talk about Josh. Say, so Josh, remember the very first day when you walked into the gym? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> you don't seem too excited. You're the one that's supposed to talk, right? Oh. <laughs> I'm not prepared. 
he's not prepared. Never mind. Um, so uh, Josh walks in the first day of practice, and uh, he was a non-recruited player. I see him walk across the gym. I look to my assistant coaches, and I go, um, I recognize him, but I haven't seen him like for four or five years. And he walks up to me, hey, coach, can I try off your team? And I go, absolutely. Good choice. Good choice by us to say, yes, you may. Because this guy turned into one of the most fantastic players we've ever had at Cuesta College. And our program's been going 54 years, Pete. I haven't been here 54 years, but the program's been going 54 years. <laughs> so uh, Josh himself, when he arrived, uh, you know, he was coming off and haven't played in a couple of years, coming out of uh, high school, and I didn't really recognize him. And then I recognized him as, okay, Josh, come on out for the team. Well, Josh, his freshman year, led, uh, led the team in scoring. Uh, he was uh, an all-league player. And then this year, uh, I just want to say, if you miss the men's basketball team playing this year, you really miss something, because you might not see it again. This was a fantastic year. We were, I mean, okay, uh, we're not NBA players, but the way they move that ball, you're looking at Golden State Warriors right there, minus all the big names. This guy might have been Steph Curry, or he might have been Kevin Durant, because this guy right here, six foot one, was number two in the league in rebounding. Now, believe it or not, I had to move him. I had so many good players out there this year, and at the guard position, I had to move him to the power forward. This was our power forward. Iker was over there, the 6'5 wing player playing the post. So really, they all over all overachieved in their positions, but we really moved that ball. We were a joy to watch, and from the coaching staff, we couldn't have been more proud of the way we moved that ball. We always hit the open player, and oh, by the way, we led the state in three-point shooting. I wonder why. They were unselfish, passed that ball around until they got the open shot, and then just knocked down every shot. Um, Gil, we got to the last game of the year. Gil with his new hips. We just beat Hancock at Hancock, and I see Gil walk, jumping across the floor. <laughs> what the heck? And here I am like an old man. I'm sitting on a chair because I have a bad back, and I go, how bad do I feel? We just won the championship. I'm ready to collapse, and Gil's jumping across the floor with a brand new hip. I got to have that doctor, okay? All right. <laughs> so... We, we won the league championship. We came back. We were somewhat buried at the start. We came back and won eight straight games, went to the playoffs, had to go the road. It was kind of a, a funky situation, us getting that seed, but we went down and played Pasadena, won that game, and basically, uh, yeah, it was a, just a tremendous season. I know Rob over there, uh, fan of the year, you came to every game, you support us. You were down in Hancock, and... Uh, for us to come back and to win games on the road against the teams that have been winning the league the entire year, for us to capture that championship in the last second of the game and the last day of the year was really overwhelming. Josh himself was a major contributor going down the stretch. I think he had 15 three-pointers in the last three games of the season. He, uh, he had 95 on the year, 95 made three-pointers. Him and Alex were number four and five in the state in steals. And we're talking about, we're not talking about extremely tall guys. We're talking about small guys that play with a lot of heart and a lot of dedication. So Dan and Linda, Amber, by the way, I didn't see you get up and run out yet. I thought that baby was going to come real quick. <clears throat> so Josh has kind of an unbelievable story because not even was a good basketball player, and for sure he could be getting a scholarship next year. He has decided to come back and perhaps work with the basketball staff as an assistant coach and get ready because his girlfriend is expecting uh, five minutes uh, tomorrow <laughs> real quick. And uh, the breadwinner here has got to go out and support the family. So Josh is, is uh, putting his uh, career on hold temporarily so he can go out and support the family. And I know mom and dad are really proud of him because we saw you at every game too. All right? So... I could go on and on. I know you got the, the form out in front of you of all the accomplishments he's had, uh, scoring, rebounding. He was the number two rebounder in the entire league. So I know that Ron was over there talking about Kevin Durant. This guy played like he was seven foot one. I'm serious. And at times he played like Steph Curry, going out a little too far, maybe 35 feet. We had to pull him back on those shots, but uh, uh, he ended up being one of the best scholar athletes and in my tenure maybe one of the best, if not the top scholar athlete we've ever had here through the men's basketball program. Josh Wilson-Murray.
Our final nominee, our final nominee from women's track, Chloe Wood, with her coach Brian Loker. Last time, I promise. Um, Chloe Wood. Chloe has a, a pretty awesome story I like to share. And uh, again, talking about track and field here, and uh, in a lot of. Um, In a lot of sports, you don't have to have, you have to have skill to be involved in that sport. So you've got to develop in the sport over a long period of time um, and get better at that sport. Um, with track and field, we're very lucky to try to find athletes who have a lot of athletic ability and then build them into track and field athletes. Um, and that's what we did with Chloe Wood. Um, in high school from Tehachapi, she was a, a gymnast and then she came to Cuesta College because she liked the area and she was here for two years not doing any sports. Um, I was in John Marsh's uh, weight training class in the last fall, and I saw Chloe in there, and I, I saw an athlete. And uh, eventually, Chloe and I got to talking, and I was like, oh, have you ever done any sports before? Well, yeah, I was a gymnast. Um, are you pretty fast? Yeah, people think I'm pretty fast. How much are you power cleaning? Well, I lift a lot of weight. And so the story kept going. I was like, what do you think about track and field? And she's like, I, you know, usually when that happens, you're trying to pull someone out of the weight room. They're like, no, nah, I got too much going on. Uh, and Chloe was like, well, I have a lot going on, but that sounds really cool. Um, so we thought she was going to be a pole vaulter at first, and we had a really great pole vaulting coach. Um, so we tried to get Chloe out to do pole vault because she's fast and she's strong and she's a gymnast, and all those things equal good pole vaulters. Uh, but unfortunately, that does take a lot of skill, and it took a little bit of time. So we didn't have that kind of time because Chloe only had one more left, one year left here. Um, so we found that she was good at a lot of things, um, and she ended up being number uh, four all-time in the shot put here at Cuesta College, first year ever doing track and field. Uh, she's number nine um, all-time at Cuesta College in the javelin, 115 feet, first time ever doing track and field. Um, Chloe, this last weekend, is gonna, she's going to go to the state meet in both the javelin and the shot put. Uh, she qualified for both, first time ever doing track and field. Um, it is an amazing story uh, from an amazing person. Um, not only is she getting it done out the track, she's, you know, from the very first day, we're like, this is what you need to do to be good if you want to get better at something. Um, she joined us all summer. She was here all fall. Um, she doesn't make a lot of the practices because she actually has, she has a job and she has to work to pay for herself here. So she gets here early. She works hard without, without the coaches if she has the opportunity to. Um, she always gets here on time. She stays late when she can. Um, a lot of times she has to just leave because she has to go to work. Uh, she missed half the season of competition because she had to be at competitions for her own gymnast boys um, and couldn't be at our competitions. And she's still doing what she did. Um, she's getting great grades. Uh, and she actually turned into one of our team captains as well. Uh, she's one of the, the, the very genuine people on the team who can use her voice to get what she wants and is extremely competitive at the same time. Um, she's been an all-around joy to work with, um, and uh, though she hasn't committed to a school next year to compete yet, um, we're looking forward to her being able to do that soon um, and choose where she wants to go and continue to compete in track and field. Chloe Wood. Laptop's not working, so the program's over. See ya. No, uh. <laughs> okay, so our athletes of the year. Okay. Our female, Quest College's female athlete of the year from women's water polo is Faith Archibald. And our male athlete of the year from men's basketball, and I'm going to say it like I do when he hits a three-pointer, Joshua Wilson Murray.
At this point, we usually have our, our, uh, our winners take a, say a few words, so. Um. <laughs> Josh can go first, and then Faith can go next. So, uh, first off, I just want to thank my parents because they've stuck by my side through everything I've been through these past few years. Uh, look where we're at now, right? Um, I want to thank the coaching staff for providing me with the opportunity they provided me. Uh, it's incredible what you guys have helped me accomplish. I thank you guys tremendously. And then finally, I want to thank my girlfriend who is blessing me with my son here, hopefully in the next two weeks. We can't wait, and I can't wait to see the type of mother you're going to be. We're going to be amazing. I love you. Thank you to my teammates as well, and everybody, thank you guys. I first want to thank my parents because they've supported me my entire life and they've made me the person that I am. And I want to thank Pete because he's pushed me to continue playing water polo and again become the person that I am. I wouldn't be where I am today without them in my life. And thank you, Bob. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, Bob, thank you for everything you do for all the sports teams. We really appreciate it. You're the best. We love you. Okay, guys, that's awesome. That was a great day. Congratulations to everybody. Um, I, I, we are going to have the award winner stick around for some pictures, but um, I just want to say everybody in here is champion. So, um, again, a great luncheon, and I look forward to next year. But um, thank you for your support here today, okay? Thank you. Thank you.